السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. That was not convincing enough. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi azim il minna. Wa nasuri al-dini bi ahli sunna. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen. نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي First and foremost let me take this earliest opportunity to thank the government of Zambia for having allowed us to be here legally. And secondly, let me also extend my gratitude to the Islamic Supreme Council of Zambia because they are the supreme leaders of Zambia, Muslims, and therefore the buck stops with them they are the ones responsible for the affairs of the Muslims in this country. And that is something that is worth noting. And uh, under the leadership of Dr. Sheikh Shaban, Hafidahullah, and his colleagues in the office, and the Muslim Ummah in general, let me also recognize the massive contribution of other shiuch in different places, the Copper Belt, the Northwestern Province, the Northeastern Provinces there is, the Southern Province, whatever you're doing is not going to waste. It is recorded in a special book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we can only pray for you. My sister came here and she recorded the plight of the women. I always talk about women, but today I'm not going to talk about women. But men, we really transgress on women in a number of issues. We'll talk about that in another session, inshallah. But for now, allow me to take you back on the 18th of April through to the 24th of April of 1955. An event was happening and it was an event of agitated voices that gathered themselves together in Bandung, Indonesia. It was a conference of the Afro-Asiatic countries who wanted to discuss matters that were bothering them in their countries regarding the post-colonial adolescent tantrums that were bothering them. They realized that their unity was threatened and they identified the enemy. And that is why they called that conference back there. It was not in the West. Amongst the countries that were invited were the Federation of Central African countries that was consisting of Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, although they didn't send a representative. But other African representatives were Egypt, Libya, Ethiopia, and Liberia. The reason why I brought that small snippet is because they realized their enemy and they wanted to sort things out. My talk with you is going to be about the topic decolonizing the mind. You may want to wonder, am I colonized in a way so that I may decolonize my mind? Maybe, maybe not. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ 
يقولون ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم this is going to be the basis of my talk with you but i'm not going to talk about the whole verse because i don't have a whole hour i may be having maybe 10 minutes or so but i'm going to talk about the ghilla ربنا لا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم the ghilla that i'm talking about is the ghilla that is stopping us from achieving the effective leadership amongst the muslim community anywhere in the world but of course today we are in zambia so we are going to base in zambia my brothers if there is no steady leadership anywhere then what follows is chaos because there is no direction i and you were created leaders and that is why allah is saying wa id qala rabbuka lil malaika inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa i'm going to create a leader on earth qalu ataj'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku ad-dima' are you going to create somebody there who is going to shed blood and spread corruption and here we are as the malaika worshiping you and praising you at the tail end of the verse allah says inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu i know something that you don't know brothers i'm talking about leadership not about malaika and i want you to move with me we need to recognize the leadership of the muslim community in zambia and elsewhere in the world because if we don't it is very very easy for the enemy to come and plant some seeds of discourse and then they separate us slowly without us realizing and in no minute we will be divided and we will now start fighting ourselves now may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take out the ghilla in our hearts if at all there is some ghilla and the ghilla is now the discord the seed of discord that is in our hearts fatima never wants to see eye to eye with khadija and maryam equally never wants to see eye to eye with sofia and abdullah doesn't want to see abu bakar and this spreads over to other muslims and therefore the muslim becomes your number one enemy and the non muslims now become your friend and you discard your muslim brother and you are ready to insult your muslim brother and muslim sister and you are ready to spare no minute to injure and harm your muslim brother at the expense of unity and peace my brothers we are not perfect and you there is not perfect and if at all probably i may be given a chance to be your leader i acknowledge the fact that i'm not perfect i may err at some point in time but when i do that it is your duty to bring me back to line umar ibn al khattab radhiyallahu an together with abu bakr when abu bakar no when omar was chosen yeah doctor if i'm wrong on this you'll i'll stand guided when omar was chosen to be the khalifa and then he gave a short khutbah and then he asks i am now going to be your leader what happens if i deviate from the road from the straight path what happens and somebody from the crowd min al muslimin he said wallahi omar i'm going to use this lance on you 
I'm going to bring you back using this lance, this sword. And you know, the sword doesn't land on you and then leave you alive. And Omar said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I have somebody like you in this gathering who is ready to go an extra mile to bring me back to line so that I lead the Muslim community with justice. My brothers, having identified that we are not perfect, we need to tolerate each other and pray for each other and advise each other in as much as you may know a lot than I know. Let me invite you to hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This prophet, this hadith is narrated and it is received or recorded by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Imam Bukhari says إِنَّكُمْ سَتَحْرِسُونَ عَلَى الْعِمَارَةِ وَسَتَكُونُ لَكُمْ نَدَامَةً يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ For sure my brothers you are making haste and you are scrambling and you are doing everything orthodox and non-orthodox trying to climb to the leadership of Islam or leadership of whatever you are leading and you are ready to kill and you are ready to smear and ready to tarnish the names of your fellow brothers this is directed towards the leadership you want leadership at any cost let me give you a small example when your politicians are doing their campaigns and they want leadership either of the representation on the constituency level or the parliamentary level or whatever level or the national level do you know what they speak about each other no politician has always spoken something good about the other the other remains always bad he is a non-performer he is useless he cannot lead and he is the best who can lead and he needs your votes and sometimes he bribes you so that he can get your vote and you know what happens when they go to the office they forget about you and they eat for the next five years and two months before elections they come back to you and they start campaigning again but they didn't perform and I'm glad that our brother who was agitating for good governance was here. My brothers, the Prophet ﷺ says, you will be struggling to get leaderships wherever you are, be it in the Supreme Council, be it in uh, the, what is it called? The Copperbell Muslim Youth, be it the Federation of African uh, Dawa Organizations, be it in the African River Foundation back in Kenya or whichever organization you will be fighting to be leaders rushing doing everything possible to be leaders at the expense of the unity of Islam but Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa says satakunu lakum nadamatan yawm al qiyamah that struggle and scramble and insult and sometimes beating and witchcraft that you also employ in it because some people go an extra mile they go to the soothsayers they go to the witches they go to in England, in, in uh, East Africa Swahili we say wanaenda kwa babu do we have some Swahili speakers here wanaenda kwa babu babu ni angalilie I need to be a leader can you check what is going to be the obstacle and then babu gives you something a charm and then you start being a witch also around and you want to climb to the leadership and you are not ready to become a leader and you don't have the qualities to become a leader 
and you don't have what it takes to become a leader simply because my brother is there and I don't want him there I want him down I want myself there now you know what follows after you have done that you may succeed but what follows after you have done that is destruction disaster ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليضيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون We do a lot of nasty things with our own hands and when they now turn back against us we now start blaming Let's not blame Let's open our eyes and let's do the right thing My brothers I've been in Zambia for the past two months but I'm not happy about the unity and the disunity of Muslims in Zambia. I'm not happy about it. I wish I could do something right now where I'm sitting. There is something deadly wrong with the Muslim community in Zambia. And you need to go back and stand in front of a mirror. All of you, when you leave this hall, just go stand in front of a mirror and look at yourself and ask yourself some questions and we need an answer but one thing remains you need a strong leadership in Zambia so that your affairs can be taken care of but you don't need to fight the leadership that is existing even if you don't like it you don't need to fight it there are mechanisms to do that my brothers, as I head towards conclusion, because conclude I must. Another hadith is uh, reported by Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari says, Tuftahu abuabul jannah yawmul ithnayn wa yawmul khamis fa yughfiru li kulli abdin لا يشرك بالله شيئا The gates of Jannah are opened on Mondays and Thursdays and you know what we do on Mondays and Thursdays فيغفر لكل عبد every servant of Allah سبحانه وتعالى who never ascribed partners to him who never worshipped any other thing except God the Almighty is forgiven every Tuesday, every Monday, and every Thursday. Illa rajulan, except one person or two people, kanat bainahu wa baina akhi, two people who had something between them. What is it? Sha'na, fayukal, and when those amal are being taken up to heaven to the honor of the receiver of the amal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah accepts all other people their deeds, their good deeds and he forgives all whatever they did wrong but for these two people and wallahi I pray that those two people are not among us as here I pray those two people are not here. Illa rajulan kanat bainahu wa baina akhi some people and report something to them and says you know this is what they are planning. Now your strategy should be this, this and that. And then he comes back to us and he laughs with us. Alhamdulillah we are Muslims. MashaAllah. But at night, he rushes back there again. He plans with the enemies of Islam. And he brings Islam down every single day. And we are looking very far. Who is this bringing turmoil amongst us? We are going to the mosque and we are praying together. Who is this? And we are looking very far. Yet the enemy is here just under our nose. إلا رجلا كانت بينه وبين أخيه شأنا. You had some hard feelings with your brother and sister, 
and you are ready to do anything to tarnish his name you are ready to do anything to bring him down because you want to ascend to leadership for you call and then Allah says anziru hadhaini hatta yastaliha anziru hadhaini hatta yastaliha anziru hadhaini hatta yastaliha this is repeated three times oh take these ones back Take these two stinking amals back until they reconcile between themselves. Take whatever they did back. We are not forgiving them today. Take their amal back until they reconcile. Oh, take it back until they reconcile. My brothers, this is what is happening every Tuesday, every Monday, and every Thursday and on Wednesday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday you are trying your level best to do the best you are trying to do the necessary but your amal is not going because you have something you have some ghilla against your fellow Muslim and the Sahabas used to pray and it is in the Quran and we are reciting every single day we are reciting every single day alladhina ja'u min ba'dihim those who came after them those who embraced islam after them those who came from uh, mecca to medina and were received by the ansar all these yaquluna rabbana ighfir lana dhunubana forgive us of our sins we are all sinners forgive us and those who were Muslims before us either our forefathers the previous prophets our brothers who just passed away yesterday and when I, do, when I talk about our brothers who passed about yesterday and I am in the copper belt a memory is coming of my friend Mufti Siddiq Rahimahullah. Allow me to request you to just observe some few seconds of silence in remembrance of him. Allahu yarhamu. Allahu yarham Sheikh. Allahu yarhamu. You all know all that he did, the efforts he had. Allahu yarham. Before he passed away, he was to come to my function in Kenya, and then Corona happened. When I arrived in Zambia last month, the first person I asked about was him, and then whoever I was asking told me, "Kalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun." My brothers, back to my point. As I conclude. If you have any problem with your sister, with your brother, make sure you make amends. Make sure you iron out your issues. They may be as grave. But do you think there is anything grave that can defeat Allah to fix? Do you think the disagreement you have with your brother is too big that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot fix? Do you think that now that your brother is in leadership and you equally want leadership and that is a big deal, you don't open mouth and you don't talk and you don't meet, do you think it's a big deal if you ask Allah to fix that issue for you? It is not a big deal. He can fix it. And you know Ramadan is just approaching and we are going to start fasting in Ramadan and you are going to deceive yourself and I too we are going to be in sujood and asking Allah oh Allah uh, protect us provide for us oh Allah I want this I want this but you will forget to ask Allah to fix the issue between you and your brother you will forget that for the whole month. And I can assure you, your amal may not go any further. I fear for that. 
Now before that happens, please as we enter Ramadan, clear any issue that is between you. How I wish I don't know the audience that I have. But I wish there were some delegates. The Muslim Supreme Council delegates. And how I wish after this meeting you would just sit down and say no. We are going to sort the issues that we have. We are going to have elections now. And we don't want a protracted election. We just want to choose our brother. Whether it is him who is on the camera. Or it is him sitting here. Or it is him. But I choose one of you. And you say we cannot all be leaders. Please lead us. And when that happens. And you have a straight leadership. Your affairs will now start moving forward. But if you remain in the state where you are, every organization wanting for itself, everyone fighting the leader, the existing leader, that may not help us much. Let's fix our issues before long. Because I can tell you that you are dying tomorrow. Because I'm also dying tomorrow. But you don't want to die in that state. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he was elected, he gave the shortest khutbah ever. I don't know whether in Zambia you do two minutes khutbah. Two minutes. Abu Bakr did two minutes or three minutes khutbah. And in that khutbah he said, I have been chosen to lead you. But wallahi, I am not better than you. I have been chosen to lead you. But I am not better than you. So I plead with your reasoning my brothers. That you may have Dr. Shaban in leadership. He may not be better than you. But please have some patience with him. And have some patience with the Supreme Council. And have some patience with yourself. Because when you are elected finally. And you sit on that seat. You may run the following day. Because it is too hot. So be patient with him. And be patient with yourself. Allow me to close by saying, when we were starting the meeting, an imam was standing here. And he recited some verses. And for some time, at one point in time, I thought I was in Mecca. The recitation that was coming out, I thought I was in Mecca. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect you, ya imam. May we have several other Quran reciters like you. And may I recite like you. Lastly on the 24th. It was said by my brother. Ambassador Badru Kisalita. I call him ambassador because he's the ambassador of Islam in Africa. If you don't know ask me. Ambassador Badru. Reminded you that on the 24th. Of uh, next week I think. That's Ramadan already. The first Friday of Ramadan. We are going to assemble in Masala. And what is going to assemble in Masala? We are not going to a wedding. No. We are going to see the graduation of some former drunkards. I wish you were in the field where we were doing Dawa. People were drunk. And they were drunk. But in the state of drunkardness. When we called for them, who of you wants to join Islam? Wallahi, they came and they were staggering and they said, I want to be a Muslim. I want to join. And we had to ask twice, do you know what we have said? Have you understood what we have said? And he says, I know I have taken beer, but I want to become a Muslim. You might have just passed him by the way. And you thought, anyway, he is just a drunkard. But he accepted Islam. And not only one. And I can see my brother, Sheikh Juma, we were with him. Kabushi was a no-go zone. Because they were so drunk. But they came anyway. And they went. We took them to school. Come Fisher.
and they are now graduating and now a former drunk is now standing and reciting the Quran a former drunk can now say Rabbana taqabal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta tawab rahim that's a former drunk who you pass by the road every single day and you don't care to give them dawah my brothers there are a lot to say but we don't have time may Allah protect me and you may Allah guide me and you may Allah allow us to arrive in the month of Ramadan may Allah accept our amal may Allah give us all that we ask as long as they are beneficial to us and may Allah make us Muslims strong Muslims and may Allah if it happens that he is taking us today may we die Muslims and when we will be raised up may he raise up raise us up among us the Muslim and when he will be taking some people to Jannah because I don't have that surety but when he will be taking some people to Jannah may I and you be among us the few who will be going to Jannah so that we could see Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with our eyes and we have the privilege to sit with the Anbiya wal Mursaleen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sabih wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh